Welcome back. This module, we're going to focus on shared vision. You remember in the earlier modules, we talked about the importance of hope and the ideal self as a part of what people have when they have these resonant relationships, relationships between the leader and the people around them. We also talked about hope and vision as a key part of what helps drive a person's development and becomes a key source of renewal as well. Today, we're going to focus on how you use this in groups, in teams, in organizations, and even in communities. We're going to start by going to KwaZulu Natal in an area between three Zulu villages in South Africa. And the story starts in 1996 when a brand new uh, headmaster was hired and brought into the region from a different part of South Africa and given this classroom. And as you could see, it was four trees. This was her first grade, second grade, and third grade classroom. Now, Musa Zikali, affectionately known as Mama in the primary school and in the communities, the three Zulu communities, what Mrs. Zikali pulled off was nothing short of miraculous, starting with the four trees and then moving and being assigned about 68, 70 students in the area that were eligible for her primary school. By 10 years later, in 2007-ish, she had over 900 students enrolled, and by then she even had a special program for 70 AIDS orphans in the community where she helped to raise money and place them in various homes within the community and created um, a very warm and caring atmosphere. But the surprising thing about Mrs. Akali is if you look at what has become with the school. So the area of the four trees now started out with classrooms like this, and you could see the students all very eager under the shade of the tree. And now the classrooms look like this, with computers, with desks, with 11 or more uh, right now, uh, concrete classrooms. Even the classrooms uh, it, within a few years started out as reed huts, as shown in this picture. And you could see what it looked like uh, just a few years ago with the children. And uh, the children all participate in both maintenance of the school properties. But again, what Mrs. Akali did was from the very beginning, when she had no teacher but herself, because in the Republic of South Africa, you're only granted a teacher, the salary for a teacher, if you have a concrete classroom. If you have a reed hut, a tree, it, it doesn't warrant it. So she decided to write to every CEO of every corporation in South Africa to solicit support, money, paper, desks. She coordinated with people at the various local or close by uh, nature reserves to put her primary school on some of the village tours that they would grant for some of the, the tourists visiting the game reserves. And that engendered a certain amount of donations and people got excited about what was happening. When every year starts, <clears throat> Mrs. Akali organizes all of the teachers and the parents of all the schools into a very large meeting and she gets them to recommit to a shared vision. It, this started at the very beginning when it was herself, and then it was two, and then five, and then seven people. She would each year start out by having them talk about what's their dream, what's their purpose. And through that dialogue, through that discussion, they come up with something they put on a piece of paper on some flip chart. It's put on the central room that's the library office, now a computer resource room. And everybody sees it every day when they come into school. By now, it's gotten a lot more sophisticated with these many children involved and these many different teachers and classes. And what they do is at the beginning of the year, after they come up with the shared vision, they identify for each class which teacher is responsible, which parents are responsible for helping the teacher, not just on field trips, but in terms of actual delivery of the material and working with each of the students, and it becomes a real team in the community to have every class 
and every course within every class uh, be a, a caring experience, an exciting experience for the children. The net result is some of the graduates of the Nicomo Primary School have now uh, not only finished high school but finished university. Others are in technical schools throughout Af South Africa and some are now going to other countries for the university experience. And it is an amazing story of starting with four trees. But it all is because Namusa Zakali has an infectious laugh. She enjoys teasing and using playfulness, one of the characteristics we talked about of resonant leaders. Her focus on the vision and the purpose of the school is ever present, another one of the characteristics. She is the essence of caring and compassion, which is partly why she got her nickname of Mama Zikali. And she is very tuned into herself. Um, her husband is a headmaster of another school, and uh, they are a family of educators committed to the purpose of what they're doing. It is an inspirational story, and I encourage anybody who is going to South Africa to visit KwaZulu Natal and look up Namusa Zakali and the Nakomo Primary School. This shared vision has become a key part in very recent research. One doctoral student, Byron Clayton, was looking at the success of mergers and acquisitions. Mergers and acquisitions, although a lot of them, you read about them in the newspaper, 80% of them don't work. They either fail to achieve their objectives or destroy capital instead of increasing capital. What was found in prior research is you need a lot of championing behavior on key people in both organizations that are coming together. Well, Byron did a very complex study with um, <clears throat> over 600 people involved in mergers and acquisitions. And his statistics was very revealing. It showed that the perceived degree of shared vision of the players in the organizations predicted this championing behavior more than anything else. And that, of course, predicted the success. So what we start to see is that the shared vision isn't just something that makes us feel good. We also know from the earlier modules it's something that helps us with the renewing process. It helps us to revitalize uh, our energy and fight against the, the, the drag of chronic stress but it also helps people come together at the most fundamental level at which an organization exists, our purpose. Why are we there? 